Hello and welcome to the LLM show and I'm your host Shomi Siri. In today's episode, I want to talk about this new task that got introduced in the latest version of the PEF library. So I first noticed about this task from Saurabh's uh, Twitter thread. Thanks a lot Saurabh and uh, he has also mentioned about all these uh, additional features in the latest version please go through this uh, thread and it is pretty informative but in today's episode i want to talk about this feature called feature extraction so previously pef library with transformers we were mainly using for uh, causal language modeling but now we kind of can um, perform feature extraction using adapters this is guys this is huge i've been kind of waiting for this kind of feature especially if you work with sentence transformer kind of models the good thing is now we can easily apply parameter efficient fine tuning on sentence transformers and um, we can actually use uh, larger transformer models uh, by only fine tuning small amount of uh, additional uh, parameters so the good thing is we can uh, like uh, we can kind of uh, work with uh, larger batch sizes as well as we can uh, efficiently fine tune them and um, the best part is like um, most of uh, these uh, model fine tuning will get uh, fit into a single commercial GPU which is a huge thing when it comes to different industrial applications right so yeah like uh, not only feature extraction, they also uh, kind of uh, supports uh, f for model for question answering. I'm not going to talk about this part today, but I will be mainly talking about uh, PEF model for feature extraction. So I actually want to apply a QLoRa uh, with a uh, sentence transform model, which is kind of uh, I want to pick a big sentence transform model which is uh, in float uh, e5 large v2 so let's see how we kind of can uh, use this model with the pef library especially uh, um, how can we apply uh, qlora and train this on a 16 gigabyte tesla t4 gpu right uh, so the good part is if you go to the pef library uh, and in the example folder, they already have a uh, tutorial for the feature extraction and also the inference. So I I basically use this code, but I did like uh, quite uh, like very simple modifications, especially to uh, inject QLoRa because uh, this code is mainly about using LoRa, I just wanted to see what if I use QLoRa, you know, because QLoRa can uh, further um, and train your models uh, in a efficient manner without uh, reducing um, the performance. So, hey, actually, we discuss about QLoRa. Please watch that video if you wanna uh, like refresh your memory. So, yeah, without talking much, let's uh, let's uh, get into our code base mm, yeah so basically this is the uh, code uh, peflora embedding uh, semantic search pi and yes i kind of uh, made a uh, few modifications all right this is pretty much the code before going into the code let's just check my configuration so Today, I'm going to apply QLoRa for a sentence transformer, and this is the name of the sentence transformer. We'll quickly look into this sentence transformer, and this is the sentence transformer, and this is from Inflot. Um, so this, uh, this um, paper was released like a couple of months ago from Microsoft, which is pretty nice. It is like a, um, sentence transform model that got uh, trained with contrastive learning and um, they have several different model types and i picked the largest one which is in float e5 large version 2 so this has the largest number of parameters and um, 
uh, embedded size 6024 and it can handle up to i guess uh, 512 tokens and um, then um, then we we have the data set name amazon esci so if you go to the data set this is like the data set and um, so basically it has uh, three main columns query and the product title if the query matches with the product title your relevance label is uh, one otherwise it's zero you know like so the idea is like uh, we need to send this part from uh, through the sentence transformer and also this part through the sentence transformer and get embeddings uh, for both query and the product title and then make sure like uh, a matching query and product title pairs uh, gives a higher similarity and others others should give a uh, lower similarity but uh, this is more like a supervised task you can see like uh, zero and one and um, pretty much we can train this as a um, like binary classification task i mean the loss and we will talk about the loss and yeah that's pretty much it so we mainly use uh, in float uh, e5 large version 2 and uh, amazon esci dataset so let's jump into the code uh, first things first uh, we are in the main let's go to the main function so in the main function first thing is to set up your arguments and um, like there are several arguments and i'm not going to go through everything but only the main things so max length this is like uh, related to the tokenizer 128 and you also need to set model name or path and um, then uh, per device train batch size in the original tutorial uh, this was actually eight i increased it up to 32 didn't change uh, anything else and there's another Mm, like uh, argument called use pfd yes we need to use pf that's why i'm using pfd here and also we have an argument called with tracking that means so let's see um this is mainly to like i guess uh, log to do login stuff you know with bait and biases or anything yeah but yeah let's that's the arguments are pretty much normal but one thing to say this code is amazing you kind of can use this code as a baseline and build your own custom applications as well so yeah first we kind of uh, initialize the accelerate object and since we do uh, we need to track and so we kind of have our project output directories and all and uh, we then uh, log uh, log about our uh, like uh, accelerator so you can see right now i only have a single gpu which is nvidia tesla t416 gig so um i'm using cuda and i'm not using mixed precision type actually you can configure your own settings uh, just by running uh, accelerate uh, config and then you just need to answer for the uh, questions you know so yeah that's pretty much it and um, then uh, this is like uh, in the main process of uh, the accelerator which is like we only have a single process um, you kind of uh, set some stuff especially if you want to push push to hub uh, but uh, we don't need to do it at the moment and uh, then yes then we load the tokenizer related to the uh, model and um, which is kind of um, pretty normal and then uh, we have the training data set so since i just uh, want to run this um, i'm just using 100,024 examples per from each uh, split but yeah this is how the training data set looks like uh, so you have this query product title mainly we use this column this column and then the uh, the other one which is uh, the like relevance label mm. 
So that's the data set loaded and we'll go one by one. So now we are doing the pre-processing function, which is pretty much like uh, there's nothing much, you know. So you first uh, like uh, you kind of tokenize your queries and uh, tokenize your like product titles and also you you have the label you know like one or zero whether these two are matching or not and um, that's pretty much it uh, so so we need to do the pre-processing yeah and then we are going to print some samples just like i guess three samples yeah it's not nothing much you know like but but is inside the training data set and then um we kind of load this model right this is important so this is our like main model and um, we kind of uh, load our checkpoint we quantize it and also we have other functions to kind of pull the embeddings and you know normalize them and do everything so let's go one by one so uh, during the initialization stage of this class what we do is we first uh, load the model but now here we are loading uh, loading the quantize version of this model so which is pretty much um, we are applying uh, uh, bits and uh, bytes config uh, so here i'm actually using q i, I want to use qlora so what i'm using is like uh, i'm using uh, normal um, four bit implementation like nf4 we talk about this in qlora paper and um, so loading four bit true uh, b and b four bit compute type remember like uh, when it comes to uh, Killora, we have like two data types. One type is like storage type. The other one is the compute type. Compute type is like mainly you kind of uh, do your like updates and all like gradients update and all. So that is like torch float 16. And uh, remember we talk about uh, double quantization like this could uh, this can actually further optimize or like further make the code efficient uh, so it's more like uh, how we can quantize the quantization constant right and we, we also need to do the device command auto and we can quickly kind of refresh the memory so all we need to do is go to here like so we are not load in 8 bit but we are load in 4 bit this flag is used to enable 4-bit quantization by replacing the linear layers with FP4 or NF4 layers with uh, bits and bytes. So basically we are using NF4 and these are like thresholds, uh, these values. I think we only need this stuff if we are using in, using LLM int 8 but we are not using them, we are not using load in 8 bit so we don't need this one this one this one this one then we have the b and b uh, 4 bit compute d type this sets the computational type which might be different from the input type for example input might be in fp32 but computation can be set to brain float 16 or 16 for speeds up right then uh, we have the b and b 4 bit con type this sets a quantization data in the b and b especially like these lane linear layers and um, options are fp4 or nf4 we actually use nf4 because we want to apply qlora right and um, then um, b and b use double con this flag is used for nested quantization where quantization constant from the first quanti uh, quantization are quantized again, right? So yeah, that's pretty much it. And pretty easy, see, auto model from pre-trained. We are doing the same thing we used to do. Only thing is we have this quantization con config and yeah, trusted remote code is true. Otherwise you need to answer a bunch of questions. So 
we have a v so now now we so this this now we have already uh, loaded the model but we we haven't applied pef right what we applied what like we basically so we have a comment loaded the quantized model okay and then um now this is like uh use pef yes we need to use pef that's the whole point and then easy 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 these are like uh, lower config and let's see what are these stuff let's try to refresh but the idea is simple this is like the bottleneck name size and this is like lower alpha remember um and um, this is bias and task type now now we have this task type uh, like uh, this is like feature extraction and this is like target modules where should we apply these LoRa layers so in key LoRa they mainly apply for the attention layer like key query and value so we also do the same yeah we kind of we can quickly refresh our memory mm. yeah this is the uh, so our LoRa attention uh, dimension like the bottleneck layer and uh, this is like the alpha parameter for lower scaling remember like how we kind of uh, when we when we add in this thing like because it's like a skip connection remember and uh, this is like the lower dropout uh, i think we are not changing anything and uh, then uh, we have the bias and uh, we don't change this stuff and uh, layers and yeah these are like uh, input and we kind of downscale this like the r and then we upscale to make sure like we can kind of add uh, these uh, outputs together like they should be in the same dimensions so yeah that's what happens here like this is like the regular matrix multiplication like uh, the input with the weight matrix and then these are like the uh, we need to add that with the uh, LoRa like uh, LoRa weights and we have a alpha to kind of scale the LoRa weights so those are like the pretty much the parameters yeah that's pretty much it and um, then yeah we, so now this one is like get pef model you can so so this is like the function returns a path model from the model and config um yeah let's go to the next line uh, so this is like the path model you can you can now see like active path config the lora config where this kind of stuff but you can always print this model but i'm not printing then this is important so they say like uh, all number of parameters this is like uh, 300 million this model has 300 million and but uh, now we are only training just like uh, 1 million um, just like 1 million uh, parameters right so yeah which is pretty awesome and um, then um, let's go to the next line so now we kind of print the model accelerate print you can see now i guess like they have changed their model um, kind of how they show the model when we print it so now it's like pretty clear you can see the pef model which fraction and you can see where what are the uh, like uh, uh, like uh, LoRa dropout or LoRa weights and LoRa A? This is like the first LoRa model, I guess, and this is like LoRa B, LoRa A, LoRa B. This kind of stuff, but yeah, that's that's pretty much the model. And um, of course, we they need to get the uh, training. Uh, we need to allow have a training data loader to to feed them in the training loop but yeah just single example will uh, look 
looks like this you know we look like this single example looks like this you know so this is like that we have the uh, query input this is like the tokenized query input and um, this is the token like uh, token types and this is like the attention mass of the query and then same for product into titles and um, product uh, titles uh, mask and also we have label yeah that's all that's all pretty much it and um, so Mm. so we have now the data load is there and we need to set the optimizer which is torch optimum uh, optim atom which is like pretty normal and now all they need to do is like just go with these normal things like learning risk schedule slicization we have we all have we don't have any warm-up updates and um, then um, B, this is like accelerator related things this is like pretty easy accelerator is amazing uh, and uh, so you just need to wrap your model optimizer train data load evil data load uh, learning risk scheduler like this is more like you know like it says like if you don't you don't need to like put this stuff into CUDA by each and every one by single handedly like this would uh, take care of everything that's the whole idea and um, yeah like uh, let's go to the training quickly number of epochs and where are we going to so now this will ask a question so i'm not i don't need to visualize my training for now because i don't want to create page and biases account so we use uh, roc and um, now there's only one thing to check we still uh, did not check uh, the loss function right we only initialize the model so for now we first uh, like uh, loaded a quantized uh, like quantized uh, if I model then we apply PEFT but still we haven't kind of uh, use use this model to extract sentence uh, embeddings right so we are about to do it so we log everything number of examples and all and uh, progress bar mm. so so this is like like this is like the training loop number of epochs right so uh yeah we don't have any previous checkpoints and now like this is pretty much uh you you go through your data loader they have an active data loader this is how you usually um you can skip your first batch or not um, it's up to you and uh, yeah like uh, so first first thing what we do is we now go to the forward function of our model uh, this is pretty much of a usual sentence transform model if you go to the model class here yes our model class uh, this one if you go to the forward function you can see what forward function is doing you know like just mm, this is the model you get the model output right and then uh, then you kind of pull everything and uh, then uh, once you pull everything uh, you also need to normalize these embeddings and you get the um, get get the normalized embeddings as the output right that's pretty much it and this is like the mean pooling so there's nothing new you know like uh, you make sure like these uh, 
you you need to use attention mask and all to make sure like uh, these padded tokens are not there in the final embeddings and yeah, that's pretty much it um so you have so again like uh, you already you have the model and you kind of uh, run it and you get the uh, uh, you get the uh, output embeddings so um, that's uh, yeah that's pretty much it and uh, from the model size and this is for queries and this is for the products and now this is like the loss so um, for the for the to compute the loss we need to kind of uh, get the cosine embeddings uh, like cosine scores i would say uh, and also the labels but um, I mean, I kind of check this. Uh, so basically, this is basically dot product, uh, like element wise, you kind of get the element wise product and then uh, you take the sum across uh, the direction. So if we kind of print, so this is like, these are like tensors, these are like tensors, this is, this is more like batch size. Uh, so this part is more like uh, batch size into uh, into a uh, like a value you know like two dimensional tensor this is like a one dimensional tensor if we now go to the loss function this is more like a binary classification loss but i would say this is a custom customized loss to get better embeddings um, so yeah, that's why I added this custom loss function designed to train a binary classification model using cosine similarity. Which is, but this is not exactly cosine similarity as well because we are not uh, we don't need to normalize as well because uh, like our big our um, uh, vectors are already normalized. But my point is like we are not using softmax or anything. Um, so. Uh, the loss function is kind of normal. You can apply your own loss function here. It could be the contrastive loss or anything. But here, what they do is like um, it's like um, you kind of check like this is like for the labels uh, for the if the label is one. So what should be the uh, score? And if the label is uh, zero, uh, like what should be the uh, score you know like that's the idea and um, so yeah that's that's pretty much the loss function and um, I'm not going to go through the loss function because you can apply any loss function you you need but now you can just just train the model let's see how you would train the model all right now this is the training loop everything is working perfectly as you can see um, this is my batch size 32 and we also can kind of look into what is the GPU utilization you can see it's like 8 gig out of 15 gig so this shows actually our um, PEF library like PEF library can actually also handle uh, quantized models you know like uh, so basically we just applied QLaura for a sentence transformer this is pretty good but we now need to do further experiments it would be nice to kind of uh, check uh, whether um, whether like uh, we might get a performance drop when we are applying a quantized model versus just applying LoRa only because uh, this model has uh, just like uh, I would say uh, 300 million parameters uh, but compared to an LLM this is like a small scale model so you can still apply LoRa only and uh, run this on a single GPU but yeah that's that's pretty much it for today and um, please uh, comment uh, if you have any questions or if you see different results and all yeah thanks a lot and bye bye